There are countless studies which have been done around the impact of the balanced scorecard and linking personal accountabilities to strategy. Let's take a look at some of them. So uh, about five years ago, Harvard Business Review wrote an article called Turning Great Strategy into Great Performance. And in there, it describes the fact that performance measurement solutions, if linked to compensation, can cause organizations to perform, on average, 40% better than others. Uh, a little while ago in Harvard Business Review, the same article talked about uh, the overall issue that only 63% of overall strategies were realized as performance gains. And if we take a look at that, we can see that 24% of the failure rate is attributed to a lack of commitment around process systems and, and, and people execution, things like consequences and rewards, performance monitoring, and so forth. What we also notice in the same study is that if we get rid of those, 18% are for all the other reasons, which include a lack of resources. So only 7.5% of the reason why strategies are not executed is lack of resources. And it's all these other things that contribute to it, a large part in the personal systems. And then the rest of it are things like the strategy is not formally approved, uh, that uh, uncommitted leadership and so forth. Interesting. If we take a look at the uh, 2004 study uh, sponsored by Corporate Leadership Council, they're looking for the business case for performance management. And if you take a look at the things which influence performance management, they're things like uh, fairness and accuracy of informal feedback. Again, part of the personal review system. Um, if we ignore number two, risk taking, number five, and number nine, the rest of them are all about uh, uh, personal performance system, things like um, emphasis on performance strengths, employee understanding of performance standards, manage uh, knowledgeable about performance, and so forth. So all of these things are attributable to the uh, scorecard and strategic management, but there's quite a huge impact if we link this up to the personal performance systems. There's a great study that was done over an 11-year horizon done by Harvard Business Review, published in 1992. And what they did is looked at organizations which have a performance-enhancing culture compared to those without. And over this 11-year period, um, what they discovered is, if you take a look at revenue growth, organizations without a performance culture saw about 166% growth over the 11-year period. But those with performance-enhancing culture saw a 682% growth rate. If we take a look at other metrics like employee uh, employment growth, 36% um, compared to 282%. Um, stock price growth, we had 74% compared to 900%. Uh, and finally, net income growth, we had 1% compared to 756. So considerable and significant performance improvements around organizations which had embedded this performance enhancing culture. Another study published at the same time, uh, this one sponsored by Hewitt, um, took a look at organizations which have um, performance programs uh, in-house compared to those without. Uh, and if we took a look at metrics like return on equity, 4.4 compared to 10.2. Net assets, double return on assets, uh, almost double return on net cash flow ROI, and finally uh, significantly improved uh, performance sales per employee. Uh, another interesting study uh, came out of uh, the book the Four Disciplines of Execution, uh, published by Franklin Covey, and it says that only 22% of workers say that they have a clear line of sight between their work uh, and the most important goals of the organization. 22%, which means 78% don't have a clue as to the relationship between what they do and organization success. So what we have also learned is if we can take an employee and develop their understanding of their roles and responsibilities, we can see that that increases performance by about 36%. What that means is that simple education of helping people understand the connection has a huge payback. And that's based on a study done by the Corporate Leadership Council. Um, a great article uh, that we talked about before turning uh, great strategy into great performance, if we take a look at the performance loss elements, 
you can see that a huge component of them is attributable to benefits that the scorecard should be offering. But if we take a look at the, the personal accountability structure, that still works out to almost 20% of the performance gap. So another way to take a look at this, again, from the Corporate Leadership uh, Council study, is taking a look at the specific survey questions. So one of the questions was about accountability. It said in uh, the respondents were asked to answer the question, in most recent performance review, I understood the standards I was held accountable for, the skills, behaviors, and outcomes that are critical to my organization's success. And what we saw is only 43% agreed or strongly agreed, and uh, sorry, 41%, and 59% said that they somewhat agree, neutral, or disagree. So what that means is 60% of the employees said that they did not understand what behaviors and outcomes that they were accountable for that were critical for the organization's success. Uh, they were asked in a second question about standards, and again, the question was, in my most recent performance review, I understood the standards I was evaluated on. And what we discovered is uh, over... 57% said that they don't really know what standards are evaluated on. So 59% and 57% is a clear indication that most employees don't understand what they should be doing and how it links to overall success.